the child Jesus said to me, Look at the sky. And when I looked at the sky, I saw the stars and the moon shining. Then the child asked me, Do you see this moon and these stars? When I said yes, he spoke these words to me. These stars are the source of faithful Christians, and the moon is the source of a religious. Can you see how great the difference is between the light of the moon and the light of the stars? Such is the difference in heaven between the soul of a religious and the soul of a faithful Christian. What must I do to inherit eternal life? You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. I've done all these things. What am I still lacking? You lack one thing if you wish to be perfect. Go, sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you'll have treasure in heaven. Then, come follow me. It's looking into the eyes of Jesus, seeing his great love for us, and sensing an invitation to give all and to become the bride of Christ. Unless the grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains a single grain. But if it dies, it produces an abundant harvest. Today, the Lord gave me knowledge of his anger toward mankind, which deserves to have its day shortened because of its sins. But I learned that the world's existence is maintained by chosen souls, that is, the religious orders. I saw the Lord Jesus holding a terrible sword in his hand. Just then, I saw sisters renewing their vows. When they had finished, I heard a voice say, Put the sword back in its place. The sacrifice is greater. Woe to the world when there will be a lack of religious orders. She gives all that she has. She gives all that she is. She gives all that she will become. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Religious life is a paradox. The vows, instead of being chains that bind, are keys that open. They open the deepest recesses of the soul, satisfying the great thirst of the heart for more, and revealing the true meaning of life. The vows, rather than being constricting, are expanding, excavating the soul for a greater capacity to love and to be loved. Those who are poor, chaste, and obedient, like Christ, become rich, fruitful, and free free from attachments, from all those things that distract us from our ultimate destiny, free from exclusive loves, so that our love may be a better reflection of God's love, a chaste love, a fruitful love, bearing the fruit of spiritual children, free to give ourselves completely, for there is no true love without obedience.
Truly I tell you, everyone who has left houses, or brothers, or sisters, or mother, or father, or children, or lands, for my sake, and for the sake of the gospel, will receive a hundredfold in this age, and in the age to come, eternal life. 